Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Gemini. If Gemini is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so this is a bonus reading for Gemini. And our card tonight is from the Tarot of the Abyss. And we have the World card. As soon as I saw it, I was thinking of that Nas song. The world is yours. The world is yours. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have going on in here. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell and I'll let you know when your next uh, readings are coming out. You can watch your solar, your lunar, your ascendant. Uh, I know people like to watch their Venus. And it is free to subscribe. Okay. So I feel like Oh, so I feel like we've had a little bit of an issue here. Some kind of Now, I want to start on this side. We have a uh we have a dragon, okay? Um and I just, I feel like I'm seeing the fire and I'm thinking there has been a, uh, just a rage. <laughs> Let's just say what it is. There has been a rage that has been unleashed. I don't think it's been fully, you know, like you just went a hundred percent, but I think, yeah, you had some cross words. I think that you definitely, um, I feel like there's a sense of feeling pressured, feeling kind of like ran up on feeling like somebody was really kind of testing you or disrespecting you in some way, whatever it was, I think it's not, I was going to say it's not, it's not your normal personality, but then again, Gemini, right? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes there's a little bit of it, like, you know, outward, like outwardly expressing your dislike or, or, um, dis-ease or unhappiness, right? Um, you're not very shy about it. Let's just say that. So, but I think this is not usual to get this angry. So, um, I'm seeing it and I, and I think you are seeing it. We have the eye right up here and I feel like you really, really, you saw yourself in the moment and you're like, okay, settle down. <laughs> Don't send that cross text. Don't, um, don't raise your voice. Don't get confrontational, you know. Uh, and you're watching yourself go through the motions of this thing. And um, and really, I think, trying to temper yourself. I think that you really tried. Really did. Um, and I think that is a big win, okay? Because I do think this has been something that you've been more conscious of, something that you have been trying to work on, okay? Um, and so I want to turn it over here. Now we have the dragon, okay? Uh, but we also have a person sitting on the back of the dragon. So to me, that says uh, there definitely has been like getting the, the reins there, you know, pulling back. It could have gone farther. You could have said some more things. You know, there was no lack of of ability to, you know, throw <laughs> to throw your thoughts out there. Um, but you got yourself under control. You really, you know, you stopped it before it got out of con out of control. It went it went not too far this time. And, um, I think that 
you know, this is something that has been important to you. You maybe have even been in some kind of anger management um, course or, you know, whatever it is, like a, a class and um, possibly, you know, seeking some guidance through therapy or counseling or support or a group support kind of thing. Um, and whatever it is that you're doing, I think it's, it's really, really helpful. And I think the biggest thing is really being able to notice how you're feeling, you know, before you, it escalates. And so, um, I think this is a time, although, yeah, it, it, maybe you, you did end up hurting somebody's feelings or arguing or, you know, um, saying the thing that you wish you hadn't, you've taken some real steps forward in being able to recognize that this was starting to happen. And, um, you know, I, was, I needed to maybe employ some techniques a little sooner, but next time you'll be more ready for it. So I see this as a win. The other side of it too, is I think really just making amends as soon as you can, right? Or apologizing or talking it out, right? Being able to kind of <laughs> find a way to, you know, don't necessarily have to say you're wrong, but um, that you wish you hadn't gone so far. You wish you hadn't said anything. You wish you hadn't involved yourself, you know? And so, um, yeah, I think this is a good, it's a really good time. And, um, I'm really of the belief that as soon as we feel like something has happened that shouldn't have, you know, there's the arguing or, or, um, you know, talking poorly about each other or to each other or whatever, um, you know, seeing it and, uh, talking about it as soon as you can, getting it sorted out, making an apology if you need to. And, um, you know, not letting it linger because then it, it, it becomes something that is like kind of etched into, um, the deeper part of, the dynamic and that, you know, we don't need that. Sometimes we just, you know, we, we get out of control of ourselves, you know, and, and it's about, um, recognizing where we've misstepped and, you know, taking responsibility for that. And it happens less. I promise you it does. I have not argued with anybody aside from my child and, you know, once in a while with my husband, they don't count. We don't, you know, but we're not a big arguing family, but, um, outside of, <laughs> outside of raising a toddler that is very <laughs> opinionated, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I don't, I have, I don't get in arguments with people. I don't have, you know, a lot of conflict in that way. Um, you know, not because I'm better at anything than anybody else. I just, I think because I, I immediately say, I'm sorry, try to work it out. I don't want to be doing that all the time. <laughs> you know, I really just avoid any kind of, um, messiness in my life because yeah, it takes a lot of time and energy and effort and, I don't like there being weird feelings and, you know, whatever. So, um, it does pay off. I think it's, it really makes life so much easier once we kind of get into that place where we're like not, um, out here arguing with people or, or having, you know, like family dramas and, and things like that. Okay. So we have a, we have a two, and we have a little, uh, it looks like a blue jay right here. So I think that you definitely are having some kind of oh, a message from your guides. 
a message from uh, a higher, um, you know, a higher plane, a divine entity of some kind, um, maybe a guardian angel. And I really do. I think that there will be two messages and I think that they will be very apparent to you. Um, I think that these will definitely be through symbols or synchronicities. Something will happen where you think, yeah, this is definitely that sign that Lenore was talking about. This is exactly, this is it. Okay. And maybe one has already come to pass, but I think that the second one will definitely be that confirmation. Okay. And now we also have, and I'm looking at this, it looks like a beaver. And it also looks like there's a star on it. We also have an angel and a musical note. We have a 12 as well. So the number 12. So the beaver, um, I really, when I see the beaver, I often think this is a place where we are building boundaries. Okay, we're really hard at work and it with the water, it's emotional um, and building up that kind of dam. And I, I feel like it's like you, there's somebody there and I feel like this is probably has to do with this maybe argument you've had, but putting up healthy boundaries and really sticking to them. And I think with the, the star there, not only is it like a golden star, like good job, but it is a goal of yours. So we think of the star card, uh, and we think of that as maybe kind of being a goal, a dream that you have, something that you are working towards. And so I think this is working on these boundaries, being very choosy about who you have in your personal life, um, who you let into your sacred spaces, who you let into your home, who you let into, um, you know, and really very, uh, I, I feel like, um, maybe superstitious, especially about places where you sleep, who you let into your sleeping quarters. And I don't just mean having a visitor or whatever, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I mean, anybody, your animals, your, um, you know, your kids, your, your, um, people who are visit staying at the house or, or whatever it is. I think just being very mindful about your sleeping space. Okay. Um, keeping it decluttered, keeping it accessible to you to sleep comfortably and get restful sleep. Uh, but also the energies you're bringing into this most vulnerable place that you, I mean, nowhere else. Maybe I can't think of anything else. Maybe like, um, what the bathtub, maybe the car. Um, these are places where, you know, the, it, we are quite vulnerable. So, um, just being mindful of that. Okay. But ultimately I think you are, uh, yeah, you're working on limiting access to yourself. And that's a big thing. When I first heard that, I think I read it on Reddit or something like one of these like subreddits about people who, um, are going no contact and this, you know, this kind of thing. And, um, and I read this, this thing about like, we don't owe anybody access to ourselves, right? We can be inaccessible. That is okay. Uh, and I think naturally for me, I'm like, I'm a very solitary person in the second half of my life or, you know, I mean the middle part of my, whatever it is, <laughs> since I was like about 30 years old, I've been very much in hermit mode and, um, that just comes naturally to me. That's where I had to go to heal. And, and I just was like, oh, wow, this is how I should have been living my life. This feels perfect. Um, but I never really thought about this idea that really, yeah, nobody deserves or nobody is like, um, promised access to us, nor should they be allowed to always have access to us. And it's okay if we don't want to, um, you know, 
freely give our time, you know, in our, um, sharing our space and, 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 you know, just giving of ourselves, our personal details, our, um, our, our thoughts, our, what our feeling, we don't have to do that. And I don't know why, but that really hit me. And I've really thought about that so much, um, in the last you know, 10 years or so. Um, and I think that, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter what you identify as, as far as our, um, our genders or, but I do think that, um, a lot of people that I can only really speak for, uh, the growing up as a woman, a female, um, which I, you know, I did and I am, and, um, we're really conditioned to feel quite privileged if anybody wants access to our time, but that we owe it to other people. Um, or, you know, it's like kind of distasteful or it's, or it's, you know, um, we're not a, um, I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to get super down that, <laughs> but I do think it is conditioned into most people. Okay. So it can be quite liberate, liberating. It can be almost like a, a revolution <laughs> in our own lives when we realize this is our life. This is, we're going to live it how we want. Not everybody gets to come and go. Um, I don't have to be around people I don't feel comfortable with. Um, you know, I don't have to do things I don't want to with people I don't want to. I absolutely, you know, and, and I feel like when we have this understanding and we, and we employ it into our lives, um, then we can really, yeah, we put up those, we learn how to have healthy boundaries. I think it's, and maybe this is just me, but I think it's far more effective, um, to let people in based on, you know, not just free, not letting a lot of people in and then, you know, slowly kicking out whoever, <laughs> whoever, uh, you know, doesn't work in your life, but letting people in after, you know, feeling them out a little bit. You know, sometimes we meet people and we just know and it's immediate. Um, but I think populating your life with so many people can be so draining. Okay. Um, so anyways, I think this is maybe part of, part of the work that is happening is really coming into this period of time where, yeah, yeah, we're facing inward. We are, um, you know, our guardian angels are there. They're watching out over us. I see the music. I feel like there's a lot of healing in music for you. You love music. And um, I think that the universe really speaks to you through the music that you listen to. And, um, you know, I, I feel like you can get really lost in it, dancing, enjoying, uh, feeling quite free and, um, you know, with an open heart. And so I think, yeah, going to the music, going, playing it in your house, um, listening to it on your headphones or whatever in your car, um, just making sure that you, you find some time for that because I think that your soul <laughs> gets so, it feel you know, when I haven't listened to music for like days, I feel like I'm in a gray world. <laughs> I just is, I need music in my life. I like to have a soundtrack of my life. If I, if it's possible, I always have music on and, um, so, yeah, I feel like this is similar. I feel you, like you feel very healed when you have when you have some good tunes going. Now we have uh the dandelion blow thing that making a wish, okay? So, yes, make a wish. Work towards it. Manifest. This is a good time. The universe is listening. It is listening. Okay, let's see. What do we have over here?
we, we have the same thing. We have another one. It's the same little uh, stem and the little seed pod on the top. <clears throat> so, yeah, you have another, you have at least two wishes coming your way. Two things that are really going to um, happen for you. So, choose wisely because this might be the big jackpot for you. Make sure that you are putting some thought into it. I also have a person who looks like they are, um, that they are kind of soaring through the sky. So, you know, think big. Dreams, big dreams, big dreams. The world is yours, right? <laughs> Okay, so we have this new deck that I'm trying out. It is The Mystique of Magdalene by Cheryl Rose. And they're really pretty. They're quite large. So I'm trying to get used to that. Um, and let's see. We're just going to flip through. Oops. We'll flip through here and we'll stop where it feels right. It says... Free rain, break loose. Riding without reins. <laughs> I kind of like, I like the contrast here. This is pretty. These ones are a little different than we usually do. <laughs> um, I like them. I think I'm going to go back to some affirmation cards. I have to find another deck or maybe cycle through some of the other decks that I had used before. Um, I miss, I like the affirmations because, um, I end up using them myself. All right. So Jim and I, I want to say thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. Uh, and if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel so much. And, um, I love doing the, the bonus readings here because sometimes they are a little bit more silly or a little bit more specific. Um, I feel a little like, oh, I can be like kind of more narrowed in, in exactly what I'm looking at. Um, so thank you for, thank you for watching them. And if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing that. It is free to subscribe. Also, if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I love reading them. I love receiving them. Uh, I know a lot of other people read them too. And I love seeing you all support each other, interact with each other. And uh, that's one of the great parts of this community here is everybody is so um, just wonderful, pretty much. We get a few little mean comments here and there, but you know. It's the internet, right? <laughs> uh, so anyways, I'm going to say thank you again. I love you. We'll talk in a few days and take care of yourself.